Today on episode number 824 of the School of Podcasting, you gave me your answers to the question, hey, if you found another really cool podcast, do you have time to listen to another one? Would you have to bump one of your podcasts? It's seriously one of my favorite questions of the month ever. I love the answers on this. We have some clarification on Spotify and video podcasting. And wait till you hear what someone did to Adam Curry. Hit it, ladies. The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting Sense. 2005, I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the show, this is where I help you plan, launch, grow, and if you want to, monetize your podcast. My website is schoolofpodcasting.com. Use the coupon code LISTENER, that's L-I-S-T-E-N-E-R, when you sign up for either a monthly or yearly subscription. And of course, both of those come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And I got a two-for-one. I was on the podcast on podcasting show with uh, AAA Adams, and he had a Because of My Podcast story in the episode that had my interview. So here is (laughs) Adam Adams. I'm not sure what the other A is for. Awesome, maybe, something like that explaining how he gets interviews with people, not because he's AAA, although that's definitely quite enough, but because he has a podcast. It does remind me of a story. I used to have a real estate podcast and I went to this conference. It was called the Family Office Conference. Basically, multi-millionaires, like 100 millionaires and billionaires were there. And because I had a podcast, it like helped me get my foot in the door in crazy ways. So I go with like all these multimillionaires and they would get off the stage and people would come up to them and everybody would be like, Hey, can I have your card? Can I have your card? And he's like, Oh, I don't have a card. And I saw this happen with three different people that got off stage. They all pretended not to have a card with two or three or four different people in a row each. And then I just said, hey, I liked that thing that you said about this, and I'd love to interview you on my podcast about it, give you more exposure and get your story out. Is that something that you'd want be interested in doing? And they're like, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. And they would pull out a card from their... I got three different cards from people that pretended not to have a card with (laughs) lots of other people. And they would pull out a card and say, here, this is my personal sell on there. Call me and we'll get it scheduled. In case you missed it, it's time for a podcast rewind. As I just stated, I was on the podcast on podcasting show. Links to everything out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 824. And I explained that, sure, for me, when I go to a podcasting conference, It's great because I get to learn about podcasting, but my target audience, people that are thinking of starting a podcast, are there as well. So it's kind of a, a double thumbs up for me, but it does boil down to who is my audience and where are they? So in this clip, I explain how I went to a session at a local library about SEO. The conferences that you get the most value from, are they podcast conferences? They are, but I also went to a one at a library and it's kind of a borderline tactic, but it worked. And it was for people that were learning about SEO. Well, people that are trying to understand SEO are trying to do what? Get more eyeballs to their website. You know, another good way to get eyeballs to your website is a podcast. And so I had a legit question and I just walked up to the microphone at the end of the thing and I said, Hey, I'm Dave Jackson. I run a website called the school of podcasting.com. And that was my only pitch. And I said, and then I asked my question. And at the end, I had four people come up and say, did you say you do something with podcasting? And I was like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, oh, do you have a card? So it was a group of like 30 people. And I had like four people ask for business cards. I'm like, that's a pretty good return on ratio. Plus, I learned about SEO while it was theirs. Hey, in just a second, we'll be talking about the April question of the month, which is, do you have enough time to listen to more podcasts? That's a good question. All right. So I asked you, you find a podcast, 
you really like it. You're like, wow, this is a great show. And so you subscribe to that show. In your current schedule, do you have enough time to listen to another podcast? And I realize that there's the whole time shifted thing and it depends on how long the episode is, et cetera, et cetera. But in general, are you going to have to bump somebody? Is somebody going to have to go, yeah, I'm not getting anything out of this anymore? Or do you have plenty of time to listen to more podcasts? Because if you think about it, we're like, yeah, just make good content. And if you hit your target audience, they'll subscribe. And I always wondered, like, yeah, but what if they don't have any more room? And we're going to start off with the one and only Steve Stewart from stevestewart.me. He's also one of the guys, along with Mark Deal, who runs the Podcast Editor Academy, links to everything out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 824, because he and Mark were on episode 752 talking about how to do audio editing as a living. And so what happened was Steve recorded this episode or this this clip in his car, and it had noises that sounded like, well, a car. And I've talked about Descript in the past. This is a a tool for audio editing that you upload your audio, it transcribes it, and then you go in and you edit the transcription. So you remove the words in the transcription and it removes it out of the audio. And that is not what I use Descript for. They also have a tool called Studio Sound and it basically listens to your audio and removes things like, I don't know, the sound of a car and yet keeps really pretty decent audio. So you're going to hear, I'm going to turn on Descript when Steve starts to apologize for the sound of his audio and you will hear the audio just get instantly cleaned up. I'll have a link out in the show notes again, schoolofpodcasting.com slash 824 if you want to see how to use Descript to do this. It's pretty cool. But here is Steve explaining, does he have enough room to listen to more podcasts? Hey, SOP family, it's Steve at stevestewart.me and podcasteditoracademy.com. I apologize for the audio quality in this recording. You'll understand as I answer Dave's question of the month, which is, you know, when I find something that I'll add to my list, my regular rotation list, then do I bump something off? The answer is no. That's it for me. I'm Steve at Steve Stewart. No, I'm kidding. I'll go ahead and go into further explanation for you. <laughs> uh, it's interesting as Dave asks the question, I'm like, well, of course not. But then I'm thinking, well, actually, I set myself up so that I limit my consumption. I have a 32 gigabyte uh, iPhone, which is almost always maxed out. And I don't have an unlimited data plan. So I'm not going to be streaming podcasts while I'm out and about. And to make things worse, I don't listen to podcasts that much anymore because I don't have, uh, I don't have a community anymore. I work from home and I really don't go out of the house much. So when I do listen to podcasts, most of the time it's just when I'm running around the house doing things and uh, maybe driving to the store. I don't even drive the store that much, but ours, uh, Home Depot, that type of thing. Yes, I'll get maybe three or four hours of consumption a week. I'll have to measure that. So how do I do it? Well, or why do I do it? Really, why wouldn't I bump something up my list? Since my iPhone's capacity is so small and I'm not assuming what I download. Well, it's because of situations just like this today and like April and like May and like in August and September. It's when I do have commutes, when I have some place to go for a long period of time, I'm going to bank those puppies in my iPhone and save them for a rainy day. Save them for when I need them. Save them for when I'm going to be traveling a lot. Today, I'm actually driving six hours from St. Louis, Missouri, just south of Cincinnati. I'm going to see some family, and it's a six-hour drive one way. So what am I going to do? I'm going to listen to podcasts. You kidding me? And I listen in Overcast at 1.6 speed, so I'm going to be listening to a lot of podcasts. And this is great. So I I need those episodes to save up for these times when I travel or next month when I travel to Mill Money Con in North Carolina or in May for PodFest or August for Podcast Movement or September for FinCon. I'm going to need podcasts because there is nothing worse, and you know this to be true, there's nothing worse than running out of podcast episodes to listen to. When I've got another three hours to go and I'm all out of episodes, oh my gosh. What am I going to do, sit here in silence? 
I can't do that. What am I going to do? Listen to the radio? Oh, are you kidding me? What am I, caveman? No. So that's my reason for never bumping a thing off my list. And even though I have a scarcity mindset with the iPhone and the streaming and all that stuff, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to scrimp and save data where I can so that I have all this content to listen to when the need arises. Today is a big, this, this weekend, 12 hours on the road. That's a lot. So I'm going to get through a lot of podcasts. Thanks, Dave, for all you do. Thank you, SOP family, for being there. Love you. And I do have an affiliate link for Descript. If you want to check it out, again, schoolofpodcasting.com slash 824. You heard where I put the original file back in there at the end. Now, Descript, much like any noise reduction, if you go a little too far, it can kind of sound like Steve needs to gargle occasionally there. So Steve did send another clip in from the car. And by the way, I don't care where you send them from. Anywhere is fine. I always love to hear from you. And so what I did was that clip that we just heard from Steve was the studio sound at 100%. And I think this one's around 95, just a little off. So we're going to hear maybe just a a hint of car noise. Hey, it's uh, Steve Stewart. Got about uh, two hours left on my trip and I ran out of podcasts. (laughs) Dang it. Oh, well, I've, uh, fortunately, I think I've got something in my Audible app, uh, an audio book that I haven't finished. So thank goodness I don't have to be like a caveman and listen to the radio. But I thought I'd give you an update after my, uh, it's what's turning out to be 13 hours on the road. Thank you, Construction Zones. See ya. Thank you, Steve. So here again, Steve banks them for a rainy day. And in the case of his rainy day, he's still got plenty of rain and he's got no podcasts. One podcast he could listen to is Home Gadget Geeks by Jim Cullison. Find that at theaverageguy.tv. Every Saturday morning at 1030 Eastern Time, I do a podcast called Ask the Podcast Coach. So if you ever want free podcast consulting, just get up at 1030 in the morning on Saturday Eastern and ask away. But I asked this question to Jim, and here's his answer. If you found a new show, you're like, oh, this is great. And you you subscribe yeah, to I'd it. To, I'd have to ditch one. You have to ditch one. Yeah, that's. I'd I think that's the one. case. I don't have any extra time right now. Yeah. So. Well, in fact, so um, I I picked up a new one, the One Nation Under Whiskey, and they do two and a half hours a week. Oh. Of, so of it's content. a two hour show. So it's a two hour show with an interview, and then it's a thirty minute show that has news. I, I'm I'm really engaged by it. Like I, I really like it. And so that's kind of consumed almost all of my podcast listening at this point. And I love that answer. Yeah, I don't have any time. Well, unless something really good comes along. Hi, this is Mark Vinette from the History of North America podcast, where I explore the wonderful and tragic stories of North America's inhabitants, heroes, villains, leaders, environment, and geography at markvinette.com. I always make time in my schedule to listen to a new podcast and do not bump someone to make room. Surprisingly, my playlist seems to sort itself out with certain shows going on hiatus, others reducing output of new episodes, and some simply ending their run. I do, however, keep things under control by regularly removing shows whose content is no longer relevant or interesting. Hmm. Noticing a pattern here. My buddy Glenn Hebert from the horse radio network.com has a phrase for that. I turned it into a t-shirt. Um, don't be boring. I'm looking forward to catching up with Glenn at Podfest. We'll be talking about that a little later. Hello, my Dave Jackson. It's Bill Mize from the Bill Watches Movies podcast, where we're a little bit mystery science theater and a little bit old time radio and a lot of my weird sense of humor powered by the occasional shot of Woodford Reserve bourbon. Bill, you might want to check out that whiskey show that Jim was talking about. It sounds really good. And I'm tapping you on the shoulder to answer your question of the month for April. As with most podcast creators, yourself included, who have several irons in the fire, I'm currently working on three different podcasts. We have a difficult time balancing acts of creation and acts of consumption. 
Between listening to podcasts and creating podcasts, and I predict that will be the common thread in other answers that folks may provide you. In your hypothetical, you tell me that I'm crazy about this show, so I'm going to take you at your word and make time for it, especially if it helps me in the creation side of the previously mentioned equation. If I can learn how to monetize my podcast, or use Hindenburg Journalist Pro even better, or write a better script, I'm going to knock off whatever true crime or Star Trek or monster movie rabbit hole I've been going down to listen to a few episodes of this new podcast. Now... How long it remains in my overcast queue is another story and another question altogether. Shows have to earn their place, but they also have to keep their place, just as I have to keep creating and providing quality content. Everyone's the same. We all keep striving. We all keep creating. We all keep doing the best that we can out here in this crazy dang world. As I always tell you, thank you for everything that you do. Take care. God bless. Thank you, Bill. I am noticing a pattern here. And man, did that have some gold nuggets in that answer. Thank you so much, Bill. But I am noticing a pattern. Hi, Dave. This is Dave Paul. My podcast, Walking is Fitness, is a daily 10-minute podcast that invites listeners to take a walk because that's what I'm doing. I'm walking as I record the podcast. And with a little descript, I can take all that traveling noise out of the show. And Walking is Fitness is a daily short boost of motivation to get out to get moving, and to get started. So I love your question because I love podcasts. It's what I do while I'm walking. After I finish recording my podcast, I listen to other podcasts, including yours. And I'm always looking for new stuff to listen to. And so my podcast feed is pretty robust. And probably every couple of weeks, I go through and delete the podcast that I'm no longer listening to it, that haven't captured my attention and held my attention. And it's a really powerful reminder as I record my own podcast that I need to maintain a high level of value, of interest, even of entertainment level. If I don't want to be that podcast that gets deleted because there's new and better stuff sitting in queue waiting to be listened to. So I guess for me, the answer is I don't expand my listening time, but podcasts do fall by the wayside if they don't maintain that high level of value that I'm looking for and and needing. So great question. Thanks for letting me share my answer. And again, my name is Dave, Dave Paul, and my podcast is Walking is Fitness. Dave, thank you so much. Love the title of the show, Walking in Fitness. Does not leave me going, I wonder what that show is about. Great title. Hello, Dave. This is York Campbell, host and writer of Poetic Earthlings. It's a sci-fi original short story anthology. Some podcasts are very, very long, some audio drama podcast. And if you miss the the story thread, then just forget about it. You, You have no idea what's going on in the story. Well, Poetic Earthlings is not like that. These are short stories. It's an anthology. So you don't have to depend completely on the other episode that went by. And also, these episodes, they're short, like 10, 20 minutes. So, you know, you're busy, you're podcasters, and sometimes you don't have a lot of time to to sit down and listen to a really long story. So these stories are short and, and will get your mind off of the day-to-day mundane things. So check me out on Poetic Earthlings. Com. As for the question of the month, I go through this problem as well. I mean, I have over 100 shows that I listen to, over 100, and probably you do as well if you are an avid podcast listener. 
On my rotation, I listen to about 10 shows out of those 100 shows. And if there's a shiny new podcast that I just, I, I must listen to, well, what I do is I let them compete with each other. So I'll listen to a, an episode of the new shiny sparkling podcast. And then I'll listen to another one, just kind of like have them duke it out in the ring, dueling each other. Then at the end, whoever survives is the winner. And then I'll listen to that show. But the other 100 shows, I still listen to them here and there. Again, they're just not on my, on my rotation. In a nutshell, that's what I do. I let them duke it out. And my ears will determine the winner. If you want to hear more of me, then you can go on my website, poeticearthlings.com. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, York. And I am so glad that everyone answered this question. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely seeing a pattern. We got one more from my buddy Arnie, who when he was in town, we went to Luigi's Pizza. He's all about football, but not just football. He niched down and went for like old football. Hey, Dave, this is Arnie Chapman, host of the Football History Dude podcast and founder of the Sports History Network. Podcast network focused on shows covering the yesteryear of your favorite sport. Now, I have a couple different approaches to the question of the month for April. The, the simple answer is, well, I don't have any open time for quote unquote new shows because the backlog that I have is quite large. So that's the pattern I'm noticing. We're all like, yeah, I don't really have enough time. And then everybody said something that is very similar to what Arnie's going to say here. But then again, I am one of the people that follows the whole, you know, shiny object syndrome. And as soon as a new show that comes out or a new topic, I'm like, oh, I got to go check that out. And I'm just going to binge until I move on to another. But then I guess you could say that there's the staples that I always listen to once it releases. I'm not going to disclose that the School of Podcasting is on there or not, but let's just say it might be high on the list. Then starting around midsummer, that's when fantasy football really ramps up, so the draft. So for me, certain seasonal particular, I had to, for lack of better terms, okay, I'm going to listen to just two or three of them versus listen to binge to 13 or whatever of them because I still want to get my other stuff. And then i am got these different podcasts with the news. I want to listen to the keep up the on, on the news. So... I would say that, yeah, a new show comes along and it's it's really hard to fit it into the, the roster. And again, we got no time except... But the ultimate backseat pusher, I guess you could call it, is Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. So if there's a new episode, which you never know when it's going to release, comes out, I don't care what else is in my feed. That is going to be the thing I listen to until I'm done with it. So to wrap this up, I suppose the way I could tell it to every podcast or listener to this is... As long as you produce content people can't live without, it doesn't matter how often you release it. That's the only thing that matters. So just make it so your content is worthy. I know, like Dave says, no like and trust. You got the make them laugh, cry, groan, think, or all the other stuff that you talk about. But that's really what it is. Just make great content because then people are going to push others to the side because none of us really have that much time to listen to every show or every episode that we want to. Just make great content. So again, thanks, Dave, for everything that you do, letting us come on your show with the question of the month. Catch you later. Thank you so much, Arnie. Man, I'm like I said, I'm so glad I asked this question. I love the answers. A couple of things that jumped out to me. Number one, people change. There are some of us that answer the question. It's like, well, it kind of depends on what season's going on and, you know, different parts of your life that I used to listen to this because I was doing this, but I don't listen to that anymore. And sometimes shows will go on hiatus and I'll find time. And again, when they go on hiatus, what do they do? They find other stuff. That's why I don't take breaks, but that's me. And I just loved it. I love the fact that people have to earn their space. That was powerful. And then they have to keep it. I think that was York that said that. Let people duke it out. And that's where, again, what are they duking it out over? How good is your show? How well do you engage with people and how do you engage with people by knowing what they want? And that's something I preach and I teach at the School of Podcasting. And I love the fact that everybody said, yeah, I I don't really have time for more shows except when the blah, blah, blah came along. And when something that was so good and it made you feel great and it made you again laugh, cry, think, groan, educate, or entertain that the other show didn't. Well, it's not that you were deleted, but it might be that I will listen to you 
when I get around to it. I am very much like Steve Stewart. As I looked at my phone today, I have 118 episodes waiting for me to listen. And when I go on these long trips to go and speak, that's where I knock these off. When I drove to Nashville for, for a podcast movement, I think it was, I got down to 80 episodes, which is unheard of for me. I'm always 100 plus. And realize what we want people to do, we want them to engage with us, but we also want them to follow or subscribe. Take your pick. But circumstances change, people change, and that's one of the things I want to point out is you do have to kind of be okay with the fact that there are going to be times when your listener comes to you and goes, look, it, it's not you. It's me. I just, I don't know. I, I'm feeling kind of, I just, I'm going to take some time for me. I'm going to take some time for me. It's nothing against you again. I need some time for me. And so they go out, try a couple other podcasts, and they come back. And they're like, I'm so sorry. I should have never left. And you go, it's okay. I'm still putting out content just for you. And you have to kind of be okay with that. But the other thing that Steve pointed out, so many times we look at other podcasts, and again, other podcasts in your genre could be potential partners to for cross-promotion. So don't always look at them as like, ah, it's my competition. No, that could be a potential partner. And Steve brought up Audible. Realize not only do we have to be good so people find time to listen to us when they listen to podcasts, but we have to be better than audiobooks, than HBO and Netflix and World of Warcraft and satellite radio and Pandora and whatever else is going on. And I don't know, time with your kids. Hopefully we're not better than it's hard to beat time with your kids. Hopefully we're not doing that. If you're listening to this, instead of spending time with your kids, do me a favor, press stop right now and go play time with your kids. <laughs> anyway, uh, keep that in mind. And I say that not to be Dave Jackson, dream crusher. You know, we have all this competition, but I think the days of putting your phone on the table, getting your friend in a room because, you know, we're just hilarious and we'll just talk about anything. If your goal was to do this for a living, I'm not really quite sure that's a realistic goal. And that's what I try to do at the School of Podcasting. I try to give you realistic expectations so that you don't get burned out, you don't get crispy, you find a topic that you love to talk about, and you go out there with your passion and you serve your audience. Hey, I was listening to the show, What Was That Like? with Scott Johnson. You can find that at whatwasthatlike.com. And in the episode, Jessica's kidnappers demanded $45 million. Can you imagine being kidnapped and somebody going, yeah, we need $45 million to set you free. But in it, she talked about how getting over that experience, one of the things that really helped her, you guessed it, a podcast. And I think it wasn't until I really started talking openly about it that I found relief. And um, two years ago, I started a podcast called We Should Talk About That with my co-host, who's another Jess. And we talk about all the things, but mental health is a huge part of what we talk about. And I have found that to be such a cathartic project and experience for me because I'm not alone. So podcasting may be therapeutic and it's also becoming a trusted partner when it comes to news. Check this out from the No Agenda Show. Today, nearly a quarter, a quarter, John, 25% of the U.S. population gets their news from podcasts. Another thing I heard that I found was just like, yeah, was on the Podcasting 2.0 show with Dave Jones and Adam Curry. Adam Curry, of course, and Dave Jones are guys behind the value for value model where you basically use these new podcast apps at newpodcastapps.com where people can stream Bitcoin to you as well as boost you, which is basically just giving you a quick shot of you know value, some sort of income. And uh, well, look at what they got. We want to thank some people. Yes, right off the bat, we need to thank an incredible patron of many value for value projects who sent mm. us in his traditional manner in all cash, which means uh, it, it's always very freaky to see this show up. It showed up in my P.O. box. I'm talking about uh, the patron saint, Sister Onimus of Dogpatch and Lower Slobovia. Oh, we got some Sir Onimus love on this show? $4,000 in cash. 
In cash? Holy Caller, crap. Shot caller, 20 inch blaze on the Impala. But now he always sends cash when he sends uh, donations uh, because he's completely anonymous. We know a little bit about him, but not really. And it just showed up in the envelope and it says for podcast index. That's so all it said. I have his email and I say, okay. I go, oh, man, I'm blown away by this. And, you know, did you have anything to say or can we credit you? We said, no, you can credit in usual, but I, you know, it's just, it's for the index. He's, this is important. He said, this is important what you're doing. So, wow. yeah. Holy cow. That is amazing. I remember Adam saying, never put a limit on what your audience can give you. And that's a great example why. Currently over at podcastindex.org, 6,373 podcasts have equipped themselves for value for value. If you would like to listen to podcasts and give back to them, you should be using a new podcast app at newpodcastapps.com. You can send boosts. You can send boostograms. The longer you listen the more support your favorite podcast receives. And you can't cancel someone who doesn't have sponsors. Thought I'd clarify something that came out in the news. Spotify has come down from the mountain and said, we give you video podcasting, to which those of us that have been around a while go, you mean the stuff that's been around since about 2005? Yeah. So Spotify has said you can now have video podcasts by uploading your video to Anchor, and Anchor will put it into Spotify. Kind of like the way you can upload your video to, I don't know, YouTube, and it will then be syndicated. So I just wanted to point this out that, A, if you want to do a video podcast, that's been around on in many hosts. I know Libsyn does. I work for Libsyn. But I always say when you do a video podcast, make it a small dimension because most people are going to be watching this on their phone. And also keep in mind that if they're downloading that file, video files are huge. That's why most podcasts just upload their video to YouTube because it's free and you can upload your super HD version there without breaking the bank, without burning up your audience's bandwidth and taking up all the room on their phone. So I always say, if somebody says, hey, should I start a video podcast? Feel free to throw it on YouTube. And then if it's not something where they have to watch you make a cake or something, just put the audio on a, for lack of a better phrase, traditional podcast. So This is, once again, kind of Spotify blowing up one of their press releases that you kind of go, eh, you know, like when they said, you can now put music in your podcast. And they went, well, as long as you do it in Anchor and the only people that can hear it are in Spotify and it's the only people on their phone and only if they're paying. So just to clarify, video podcasting has been around forever. And if you want to upload your podcast, video stuff to Spotify. Look, it doesn't cost you anything. And I'd have to read their terms to make sure they don't somehow end up owning it or something like that. Cause keep in mind, Spotify, a lot of the ownership of that is record labels. So definitely read the fine print. I just know for me, I'm going to upload it to Spotify right after I upload it to that other little video site you may have heard of called YouTube that has 30 million visitors per day. So absolutely. But if I've only got time to upload to one, yeah, it's not going to be Spotify. Next week, I'm going to be sharing an interview I did with Connie Albers when I asked her after not seeing her for a couple of years, any because of my podcast stories, she had a ton and then she just had a ton of lot of really good advice like this. That was a very important key is I didn't focus on the stats as much as I focused on is this good? Is this something people are interested in in learning from? And and I know stats are part of that. But when you're first starting off, in my opinion, you can get really discouraged because you're not getting 1000 downloads. And of course, you can go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash subscribe or follow, take your pick and never miss an episode. And if you're ready to start your podcast and experience unlimited 
time shifted one on one consulting, go over to school of podcasting.com slash start and use the coupon code listener. That's L I S T E N E R. You can sign up for either a monthly or yearly subscription. And remember that comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks so much for tuning in until next week. Take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. Hey, this is Doug from King's X. And if you like what you hear, go tell someone and may the groove be with you.